Okay, good morning everyone. Day 5. Um, we're going to move on to section 3.3, solving a system of inequalities. We just left solving a system of equations where we had something like um, 2x plus y equals 6 and then maybe like negative 3x minus 2y equals 7. We were solving a system of equations. Today we'll be solving a system of inequalities. Okay, so it's a little different than solving a system of equations. Okay, when we solved a system of equations, we, we found the intersection of two lines. Okay, today we'll be finding we'll be finding what's called the solution region. It's going to be more than just one point, the intersection. It will be a lot of points. Okay, so we're solving a system of inequalities. But before we go, do, um, do that, let's recall some things you learned in Algebra 1. I know it's been a couple of years and you have probably have forgotten this, so I'm going to, to just review some things. We'll start with the linear equation y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the y-intercept. And let's say here I had just a simple equation y is equal to 2. And I wanted to graph that. Well, that's just a horizontal line. The slope is 0. So it's a horizontal line. And that would be right there y is equal to 2. y is equal to 2. <clears throat> All right, what happens if I have the equation like um, rather than y, if I say x equals negative 3? Well, rather than a horizontal line, that's a vertical line at x is equal to negative 3 right there okay and let me put that there that's x is equal to negative 3 so y equals 2 that was the horizontal line and then x is equal to negative 3 that is a vertical line right. we'll do some more a couple more here again this is just review what happens if I have something like um, y equals 2x minus 3? Okay, I want to graph that. So to recall, to recall, you start at the y-intercept. The y-intercept is negative 3. Okay, the y-intercept is negative 3. Let me um, change the color on that. So, okay, y is equal to 2x minus 3. y equals 2x minus 3. You start at negative 3. You start at the y-intercept. My slope is 2 or 2 over 1. I can write that as a rational. I can write it as a fraction. So I go up 2, 1, 2, and over 1. 1, 2, and over 1. 1, 2, and over 1. Or I can go down 2 and to the left 1, down 2 and to the left 1, and I would graph that line there. So again, this is all review. So that's the line y is equal to 2x minus 3. And then finally, finally, if I have um, the equation, yeah, uh, if I have the equation y equals negative, let's say here, um, one third x plus four, y equals negative one third x plus four. So my y-intercept is four, so I start at four. My slope tells me to go down 1 and over 3. So I'll go down 1 and over 3. Down 1 and over 3. 1, 2, 3. Down 1, over 3. That's kind of kind of hard to see. So down 1, 1, 2, 3. I think that's kind of hard to see there. Okay, I can go down 1 and over 3 again. 1, 2, 3. Down 1 and over 3. And then I can draw my line. Okay. So that's the equation y equals negative one-third x plus four. Okay, so those are the simple case. They're not inequalities, they're just simple equations. y is equal to two, x is equal to negative three, y is equal to two x minus three, and then y is equal to negative one-third x plus four. Again, that's prior knowledge, so things you learned in algebra one. Now we're going to change things, and rather than a, a equality, we'll have an inequality. So now what happens if I just 
modify the first equation, what happens if, or maybe just another one, what happens if I say y is greater than or equal to negative 4? Okay, well, it's really two things here. So I have a line that goes at negative 4 for y, like that. But then it says y is greater than negative 4. Well, certainly negative 3 is greater than negative 4. Negative 2 is greater than negative 4. And negative 1, anything above that line, will be greater than or equal to negative 4. So that's how it will graph that, inequality. That's how it will graph that one there. So, oops. Never seem to grab what I want to. Okay, so that's how I would graph that inequality. So y is greater than or equal to negative 4. What happens if I have um, x is less than 3? Less than 3. Now, this, I want you to notice, I don't have, x will not equal 3 because because I don't have an equal underneath an inequality or a line underneath an inequality. So it won't equal 3, but what I'll have is a dotted line. It's just like when we have interval notation or, or when we were drawing um, on the number line. Remember circles? You indicated that the endpoint was open. Parenthesis indicated that the endpoint was open. All right, or if the circle was closed, then the endpoint was included or we had a bracket, okay? Now when we draw inequalities, okay, what we'll have is we'll either have a dotted line, we'll have a dotted line if it's open. Here, let me clear this up because that doesn't quite look like a parenthesis. We'll have a dotted line if it's open like this. And if it's closed, we'll just have a solid line like that. Okay, so when I say x is less than 3, I will have a dotted line here at 3. And certainly 2 is less than 3 and 1 is less than 3, so anything to the left is less than 3. x is less than 3. So this would be x is less than 3. This would be y is greater than or equal to minus 4. Alright, so let me... Eh, so I'll color that there, and that's that there. All right, and again, just the simple cases. Now, what happens if I say, okay, what happens if I say here y is greater than or equal to 3x minus 1? Okay, so first let's um, plot the, the equality, y is equal to 3x minus 1. But again, I want you to notice here that we do have an equal here. So I will have a solid line when I go to graph that, all right? I, will, I have an equal. So I'll start at negative 1 because that's my y-intercept, and my slope tells me go up 3 and over 1. So 1, 2, 3, and 1. 1, 2, 3, and 1. Or I can go down 3 and to the left 1. 1, 2, 3, and 1. And then I can draw my line. It's a solid line because we have an equal and an inequality. So it's like that. But now the question is, what side of the line are we on? Are we on this side of the line? Or are we on that side of the line? Well, it's very, very easy. Let's look at what we did with this here. When it said y is greater than or equal to negative 4, we were above the line. I want you to notice we were the, above the line here. Okay, see that? We were above the line. So anytime it says like y is greater than, we're above the line. We're above it. So let me erase that. So that means, so we're above the line. So that means we'll be over in this side. See, we're above the line here. We're above the line. All right. If I had, and then the other one, if I had y, oops, I had another color here. So if I had y is less than, less than um, minus one half x plus five, y is less than negative one half x plus five. Again, I have to start at the y-intercept, which is five. 
And my slope tells me go down one and over two, down one and over two, down one and over two, or I can go up one and two to the left, up one and two to the left. Now, again, I want you to notice I don't have an equal here. Okay, so that means I have a dotted line. It's open there. It's open. So I'll just draw that like that. Now, does it say less than or equal to? Well, it says less than, so that means I'm below the line. So I'm over there. All right. So that's how we graph the simple cases. Okay. Now we'll look at putting everything together because we weren't solving a system of inequalities. We were just graphing inequalities. Okay. Now we're going to solve them. So let's take a look at some examples. So when a problem uses phrases like greater than or no more than, you you can model the situation using a system of inequality. So what they mean is like this here. Why, if it says no more than, that would be like y is less than or equal to 3x plus 2. If it says greater than, that would be y, something like y is greater than or equal to negative 1 half x plus 5. Okay. But notice um, we're solving a system of inequalities, not e equalities like we did in 3, 2. Okay, inequalities, we're using less than and greater than. So a system of linear equalities is a set of two or more linear inequalities with the same variables. The solution to a system of inequalities is often an infinite set of points that can be represented graphically by shading. When you graph multiple inequalities on the same graph, the region where the shading overlaps, the reading where the shadings overlap is the solution region. So let's take a look at some examples. We'll take a look at the first system of inequalities. Oops, I have I have y is less than one half x minus three. So again, we'll have a dotted line because we don't include the equal. So what do we do? So we start at negative three, which is what they did. And then we went up one and over two, up one and over two. And then we draw our dotted line, which they did. Now it says y is less than, so that means we're below the line here. We're below the line. And then we did the other one. We graphed the other equation. y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 2. So we start at 2. My y-intercept is 2. My slope tells me it's a negative 1, so that's negative 1 over 1. So my slope is negative 1 over 1. So I go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1, down 1 over 1. And again, this is a review of graphing linear inequality, or graphing, graphing y is equal to mx plus b. You did that in algebra 1. So, and then we draw the line. <clears throat> okay, and it's a solid line because we have the equal there. It's a solid line. And this says y is greater than, so it's anything above that line. It's anything above that line. Okay, so the solution set then is that you have to be below the red, the, the red line and you have to be above the, the blue line, okay? Which means that the solution set is, is this here. Okay, it's where they enter. It's, it's, okay. So any point, any point in this region will be a solution. So for example, if I chose, let's just choose a point here. If I chose the point, what is that? Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 and negative 2. So this is a point 5 and minus 2. And if I verify that, let's just see if I get true statements for equation 1 or inequality 1 and inequality 2. So let's just see if we get true statements. y is negative 2, so I have negative 2, is less than 1 half, and x is 5 times 5 minus 3. So I have negative 2 is less than 5 halves minus 3, 5 halves minus 3. Easy thing to do when you're working with a, a fraction and a whole number like that. You just take the denominator here, so, or um, we'll just convert. So 5 halves minus 3 over 1. I need to multiply both my numerator and denominator by 2. 
And so I get um, 5 halves minus 6 halves. Okay, which is minus 1 half. So minus 2. So is it true that negative 1 half is greater than negative 2? Yes, it is. It's true. Negative 1 half is greater than negative 2. And then if I did the other one, if I, if I check the other um, inequality, so again, y, y is um, negative 2. y is negative 2, and is that greater than or equal to negative x is 5, x is 5, and then plus 2. And so negative 2 is greater than or equal to negative 5, plus 2 is negative 3. And that's true too. So that so that point here, so that point right there, was in a solution set. So any point in that green area will be a solution of the, uh, that inequality. Any point. I just I just checked one point there. Okay. So we so let's continue on. Let's continue on here. Look at some more examples. Here we go. Graph the system of inequalities. So we have y is less than negative 3x plus 2. So my y-intercept is 2, right there. And again, notice we'll have a dotted line. So we have to go down 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 1. And then we draw a dotted line like they did. Now this says y is less than, so I have to be below that line. I have to be below that line. And then I have, it says y is greater than or equal to negative 1. And they drew the line y is equal to negative 1, and it's solid because, because it's, you have the equal there, too. Okay, so then the solution set is, is like any area in here. You have to be below the red line, and you have to be above the blue line. So you could choose any point in that region and check, and you'd get a, a true statement. I would encourage you to try the point, let's see here, 1 one and one so try that point one and one and you'll see you'll get a true statement oh that would be my bad that would be not one and one that would be negative one and one I'm sorry that's negative one and one I'm to the left of the y-axis negative one and one <clears throat> try and try that point and you would um, get a true statement Okay, so let's let's continue on here. Here's another one. Okay, well, notice here though that um, they're not written in y is equal to mx plus b form, and we really want to put it in, in y is equal to mx b form. Okay, we're working with inequalities, and let's recall when you're working with inequalities, it is true that five is greater than two. That is true. But if I multiply both sides by a negative 1, okay, is it still true that negative 5 is greater than negative 2? Well, no, it's not. Negative 5 is less than negative 2. So when we, when we go to put things in, in slope-intercept form or solve for y, because we'll be solving for y, because that's going to help us grab. And if we have to multiply or divide, if we have to multiply or divide, if we have to multiply or divide by a negative number, we have to switch the inequality. You have to switch the inequality. You have to. Not adding or subtracting, multiplying or dividing. When you multiply or divide by a negative number, switch the inequality. Otherwise, it won't be right. You see 5 is greater than 2, but it's not true that negative 5 is greater than 2. I multiply both sides by negative 1. Negative 5 is less than 2. So what they did, the first equation, x minus 3y is less than 6. I have to solve for y. I have to isolate y. So I'll subtract x from both sides. I'll get negative 3y is less than negative x plus 6. And then I switch, then I have to multiply everything by negative 1. Okay, negative 1. And so that will give me then 3y. 3y, but I have to switch the inequality because I multiplied by negative 1. 
Okay, so 3y is greater than x minus 6. I could have divided by a negative 3 too. That would have been the same thing. So 3y is greater than x minus 6. And then finally, I'll, I'll divide everything by 3. And I'll get y is greater than 1 third x. And minus 6 divided by 3 is minus 2. OK, which is the equation that they got there? Oops. Come on, grab the highlighter there. I want the highlighter. So right there. Well, actually, they have y is equal to 1 third x minus 2. But y is greater than 1 third x minus 2. Now, let's graph that then. OK, so my y-intercept my, my y is negative negative 2. Right there, negative 2. And my slope says go up 1 and over 3. So up 1 and 1, 2, 3. Or I can go down 1 and to the left 3. It doesn't matter. Okay? But it's a dotted line because it's not, I don't have an equal. And it says greater than, so it's anything above that line. It's anything above that line. And then we have to write, we have to, so, and then the other equation or inequality was 2x plus y is greater than 1.5, 3 halves. I can subtract 2x, I get y is greater than negative 2x plus 1.5. So my y-intercept is 1.5, which is what they graph there. And it says go down 2 and over 1. So I have to go down 2, 1, 2, and over 1. Down 2 and over. And it says... Um, so it's a dotted line because we don't have the equal, and it says anything above that line. Y is greater than, so I'm above that line there. So I have to be above the red line, and I have to be above the blue line. So the solution, oops, the solution set is anything here in this region. Anything in that region there. All right. And then finally, the last, so now I have two more examples, and then that will be it for today's lesson. Basically, guys, this is just graphing things that you did in Algebra 1. Y is equal to mx plus b, although it's just inequalities now. So a lot of this should be revealed. The next equation, y is less than or equal to 4. So again, I have a, a solid line at y is equal to 4, and it's anything below the line, less than. And then I have to what, write um, 2x plus y is less than 1 in slope-intercept form. So I subtract 2x, so y is less than negative 2x plus 1. So my y-intercept is 1. My y-intercept is 1 right there. My slope says go down 2 and over 1, down 2 and over 1. It's a dotted line because I don't include the equal, and now it's anything below that line. So I have to be below the blue line, and I have to be below the red line. So my solution set is all of this here. Any point in there will be a solution of those two inequalities. Any point. All right. Any point. And then the last one they give us, OK? So we have, we have 4, you know, let me move this over here, we can see it better. We have 4, we have 4 inequalities. And let's just go through this. The first one, y is less than or equal to 4. Well, that's that one there. Um, y is greater than or equal to negative 1. That's the red line. You have to be above there. y is less than or equal to negative x plus 8. Let's see here. They started here, so it's going by 4. There's 8. And we go down 1 or over 1, or we can go down 4 and over 4, down 4 and over 4. It's a solid line, and we have to be below that line. We have to be below it. And then finally, finally, y is less than or equal to 2x plus 2. Okay, so the y-intercept is 2. Oh, they're using green, so maybe I'll use green. Um, okay, so my y-intercept is 2. And my slope is 2, so 2 over 1. So 
2 over 1, so I have to go up 2 and over 1. Or I can go up 8 and over 4. 8 divided by 4 is still 2, so 4, 8, and 4. All right, and that says I have to be, let's see here, I have to be below that line. Okay, it's less than, so I have to be below that line as well. All right, so I have to be below the uh, blue line, above the red line, below the purple line, and below the green line, and what I get is a trapezoid. I get a trapezoid right there. Okay, so there's a lesson. It's just, <clears throat> but today, um, rather than finding one solution, we're finding what really amounts to an infinite number of solutions. It's called a feasible region. Any point in that feasible region will be a solution of those inequalities. Okay, so that's the lesson for today.